Whether you have your own bathroom or you share one with your family, a little extra help keeping the bathroom sink, counter, and mirror clean goes a long way. And Viva paper towels are for the long haul. They're two times more durable when wet compared to the leading value brand. And they clean like cloth, helping you keep the surfaces in your bathroom dry and fingerprint and toothpaste free. For an exceptional bathroom clean, there's Viva Paper Towels. Visit vivatowels.com to learn more. They don't believe me, but I was there. I saw what I saw. I know what I saw on the Fringe Radio Network. Why don't you go to FringeRadioNetwork.com? The views and opinions expressed during this broadcast do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of this radio station, its management, or its sponsors. Listeners are urged to use their own discernment to draw their own conclusions. <laughs> Welcome into Red Letters Radio with Andrea Polanis. She's the founder of Zientology, Killing Satan, one red letter at a time. Here's your host, Andrea Polanis. Hello, everyone. Yes, I'm back. I'm still alive. You didn't think I'd be back? Uh, Well, surprise, I'm back. (laughs) And during our last discussion, we're talking about uh, what's up with Andrew lately, and then we went into a little bit about leadership, leadership development in the church, and then we talked a little bit about praying in the Spirit. Now, if you took the challenge in my last broadcast to try praying in the spirit. And and I'm talking to Christians now. If you're not a Christian, just push pin this thought because, you know, this is for Christians. Praying in an unknown coded language that only God can understand. That's what we were talking about last time. And... Some people, if you're looking, you're scratching your head, like, what is she talking about? You've heard people say talking in tongues as it relates to the Christian religion. Okay, I'm just not calling it that. Um, I'm calling it a special coded language that only God can understand. And in the last broadcast, I challenged every believer to try it for one week praying that way as often as you can and I even um, 
taught a little exercise, a little warm-up exercise in case, you know, to kind of get you ready before you go in your prayer closet. It's the same way a singer warms up, you know, before he or she sings. Um, You know, you do your exercises. And you just kind of do your little warm-up before you go into your prayer closet and pray in a special coded prayer language where you kind of have to make your flesh obey your spirit. Because any time you're about to do something for God or you're about to do something that is an act of faith, you know, something you really, you're not sure if you really believe in it or not. Um, you're, sh- you're not sure if this really works or not. But you're open-minded and you're skeptical and you're going to give it a try. Okay, and if you did that and you've been praying this way for this past week, um, I'm going to explain some things you've probably experienced. And one of those things is an attack, an unusual, strange attack of the enemy, right? Mm Mm-hmm. I'm writing myself a note. Okay. Right, you didn't know you didn't know that Satan was going to attack you, try to blindside attack you when you started praying like this. Well, yes, okay. And I know you're like, how does she know? I just listened to her on YouTube. Like, because it, all of us Christians who do it know because we got attacked when we first tried it <laughs> and still get attacked for doing it. So... You probably got attacked. Now, once you are you get into the flow of it, once you get in there and you get in your prayer closet and those words are just coming, you, you're sitting there trying not to even think about it, right, with your conscious mind, all right? You notice strange thoughts coming across your mind, right? Well... Those thoughts are supposed to come across your mind. And the thoughts that move across your psychic, your your conscious mind can sometimes indicate what you're praying in spirit. Okay? Now, I want to back up just a minute. Before I really get into this, okay? And I want to kind of ease into this. So we're going to think about Jesus and the language that he spoke. I'm not really sure. I think Jesus, I know the Bible was written in Greek. Uh, But you have to remember the writers were Hebrew. And it's not uncommon that Hebrew boys at that time would be bilingual. However, I'm not really sure if Jesus was bilingual or not. Um, I need to look into that. And if you know, just shoot an email at 99classicrock at gmail.com and let me know. But if I'm a Hebrew, think about it for a minute. I'm a Hebrew. I'm one of these disciples. I'm, my thoughts are in Hebrew, but I'm writing in Greek. So, I, you know, and I, I told you last time as a teacher, as a Bible teacher, God speaks to you as a Bible teacher, and he speaks to you in his language. And he gives you the understanding of what he's saying to you, okay, in his language. But you have to process that in your mind, in your thoughts. Okay, for instance, myself, I think in English. I speak in English. I think in English. So God speaks to me in his language. And in my mind, I have to translate that into an English worded thought, which is a complicated language, English is. And then reiterate that in a way that a mass audience can understand it, right? All right. When you're praying in your prayer language and you're in your closet, 
don't pray what you want in your language in English or whatever your spoken native language is. Satan understands our, all our languages and he can interfere when we when he can hear and understand what we're asking God for. He can interfere with it. But you know how you pray to yourself in your mind sometimes when you can't pray out loud? When you're praying in the spirit, be thinking of what it is you want. Okay? But don't say it in your own language. Just pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Okay? Once you get to the end of your thinking... And you just pray in the spirit. Now, this is what should be happening if you're actually doing this. Okay? If you're not doing this, you need to go and listen to last week's teaching so you can get caught up with everybody else. Okay? Once you get to the end of all of your burdens, okay, you're in your prayer closet, and you're in there, and and you're doing it. You're putting your vowel sounds and your consonant sounds together, and you're just not even thinking about it. You're just letting it flow. And you're kind of hoping the neighbors don't hear because they're going to wonder what you're doing in there. <laughs> they're going to wonder what you're smoking and come over there and want you to give, like, give them some of what you're smoking. <laughs> and look, amen, that's in line with the Bible because if you read in Acts chapter 2, when these people started speaking in unknown, in, in tongues, what they call tongues, they thought they were drunk, okay? Don't worry about that. Okay, and once all of your, you get to the end of all of the things that have been weighing you down, then all of a sudden you feel that calm peace come over you, all right? It's a release, an inner spiritual release. Okay, don't stop. This is like doing crunches, Okay, praying in the spirit is just like doing crunches. It doesn't really matter when you're doing crunches. Okay, it doesn't matter until the pain starts, right? So if you do 50 crunches before you start feeling any pain, then those 50 crunches are just to get you to that point because the muscle doesn't develop until the pain starts, right? Okay, well... Same way with praying in the spirit, okay? Once you get to the end of every thought you could think about every problem you have, there's this calm peace that will come over you, and it feels like a release, like it's been lifted. Your burdens have been lifted. Keep praying in the spirit when you get to that point. Keep pushing. Push. That means pray until something happens. Keep on praying because when you continue to pray like that, then God will start speaking back to you. God, then the thoughts that start coming across your mind will be things God is showing you. Okay? And, you know, that doesn't mean repeat it in English. Okay? If you're praying in the Spirit, that's coded communication. Now, let's talk about communication. There's verbal communication, sign language, written communication, signal communications. If you tune in to 99.1 FM, located in the metro Atlanta, downtown Noonan area, at 5 a.m. in the morning, you will hear my voice traveling out throughout the airwaves, okay? That means you have a receiver that's picking up a signal. Then it's translating that signal into an audible form of communication. You see all different types of communication in Revelation. You see verbal communication taking place, written communication taking place, spiritual communication taking place. The eagles who travel and speak in midair. Okay, those, that's broadcast communications. I think there's Revelation chapter 8 or something where the eagles fly in midair saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, the first, what was it? The first 
four trumpets of sound or something like that. And woe, because the fifth trumpet is about to sound. And woe to the inhabitants of the earth, you know, because of the judgments that are coming upon them. That was a broadcast communication. That went out. You know, that's, that's the same thing as listening to me on the radio. So what happens when the signal goes out, where there's audible, written, verbal, sign language, it's transmitted and received. It has to be decoded and understood. So when you pray like this, God can understand everything you're saying perfectly. Even if your conscious mind doesn't, or even if somebody else doesn't. And believe me, when you pray like this, it's better. It's better for you to pray this way than it is. Because if God, sh- when you start praying this way and God starts showing you things and, y- you know, your mind becomes this movie screen now. Okay. And God will show you things. He'll show you things. He'll show you who your enemies are. He'll show you what they're up to. That's right. He'll show you what you need to change about yourself. If there's something you need to correct. And trust me, if you're a child of God, you love it when God shows you something to correct. Because anytime God shows you something you got to correct, that means there's a blessing behind that. That's why children of God hurry up to, to get the correction of the Lord. Because anytime the Lord corrects us, and says, hey, I need you to change this, change that, change the name of your radio show to Red Letters Radio. You know, Red Letters Radio. Red Letters Radio. Red Letters That's right. Radio. Because where is the salvation? Where is the deliverance? It's in the Red Letters. Right? The healing is in the Red Letters. I, I was telling my apostle that I'm sitting under Apostle Deborah Harris today. We were talking we had dinner at her church, and uh, I told her about this old Bible I have. I bought down in Orlando. Actually, it was a gift. Someone bought it for me uh, 20 years ago in Orlando, Florida, at the Holy Land, uh, uh, what you call it, theme park, theme park. And it has red letters in the Old Testament. And this Bible's so old, the pages are falling apart. I call this Bible Old Betsy because any time I get confused I and I have to read Old Testament because I interpret Scripture in light of other Scripture, you know. Um, I'll go to the Old Testament, and I'll, I'll tell you tell me that praying in the Holy Ghost or praying in the Spirit in a coded language is not in the Bible. I'll go back to Hannah. I will take you all the way back to Hannah when she prayed like a crazy woman on the altar for a baby. Okay? And Eli was the preacher who, and and look, y'all know Eli was a backslidden preacher. Okay? He accused her of being demon-possessed. He went down there to rebuke her for praying like that. And she told him, she said, I'm not demon possessed. I'm praying down here, man. I need, I'm just, I'm desperate for a blessing from God. I'm praying like a crazy woman. Well, he finally realized, uh, I guess she wasn't demon possessed. And he finally just said, okay, well, whatever it is you want God to give you, I hope he gives it to you. You know, and if I'd have been a preacher in Eli's position, I would have probably said the same thing, you know, uh, because y'all know the story. Hannah's husband was in love with another woman, and she could have children, and Hannah couldn't. And she was rubbing that, rubbing that in, in her husband's face all the time, you know. Always using the kids as an excuse for something, right? Always throwing that up 
in, in Hannah's space, and they all had to go to church together as a family. And you know Hannah just, she could not stand having to sit in church with her husband while he sat there. And could you imagine ladies going to church with your husband? And he's already got a girlfriend sitting in there, too. Another woman, he's sleeping with both of y'all. Got one on one side and one on the other side. That's what Hannah's life was like, okay? And she went down there, and she told, she prayed. And, and she had to pray so her enemy couldn't understand what she was saying. And she was basically telling God, give me a baby, and I'll give him back to you. Now, if that was me, I'd say, God, you give me a baby. And I, you know, Hannah had, she had Samuel. That's where the prophet Samuel came from, you know, long story short. And he's the one that anointed King David and King Saul and all, you know, before he died and everything. But, you know, if that was me, I'd be like, hey, God, uh, you can have all my kids. You know, if you give me four, you can have all four of them. <laughs> but, you know, God's probably up there going, I've seen your kids, Andrew. Uh-uh. <laughs> Just a little humor. But seriously, though, Hannah was praying a crazy prayer because she was needed something from God desperately okay now hmm where else can we find somebody praying crazy prayers in the Bible hmm I don't know nothing's popping into my mind at the moment uh, but you know by the time I get talking about something else let's talk about blind Bartimaeus for instance uh, this lines up with exactly what I'm talking about Right? You've been praying in the spirit. You say, oh, I've, been, I've listened to you, Andra. I've tried what you have suggested. I have noticed some weird things and some strange things going on. I'm a little confused. Seems like the devil's acting up. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, the devil's going to act up. Look at blind Bartimaeus, for instance. Blind Bartimaeus could not see. He was born blind. Not because anybody sinned or not because God was punishing him. He was born that way. He had four senses. He didn't have five senses. Okay, where you and I, if you can see, if you have eyesight, you have all five senses. If you can see, hear, taste, and smell, and... <laughs> What's the other one speak? No, what's the other one see here? I don't even know what I'm talking about, but you know what I mean. So because he did not have the use of his eyes, his other four senses were extra sensitive. And he, right, I am Ryan's eyes, ears, nose, taste, okay. And touch. Okay, well, all right. Well, Barnabas could do everything but see, all right? Uh, so, and you know that our five senses, right? That's our contact with our world. That's our, con our connection to our world is through our five senses, through sensual perception. Our connection to God is internal, a spiritual internal connection, okay? We don't recognize God through our five senses, do we? He speaks to our spirits. He tells us what's going to happen before it happens, before our eyes see it and our ears hear it, right? We already know before it happens because he's already spoke to our hearts, okay? But there's times when God doesn't speak to you. God didn't say go over there, but you were just going through your normal course of life and you accidentally walked up on your husband with another woman. God didn't tell you to go over there, but you just showed up to have lunch, and there they were. Hmm. Now what you going to do? Well, it may not be what it looks like. Maybe she's a Avon lady just coming by to sell him some jewelry for you or something. I mean, maybe... 
that's uh, one of the local preachers, and they're preaching to your husband. I mean, hey, you don't know. Just because you see a woman don't doesn't mean everything. But you're taking that information in through your five senses, right? Every You see how the devil can play with your five senses? It's all in how you interpret what you see, interpret what you hear. This is why you... He can hinder prayers that you pray in a language, in your own language, in a language you can understand. Because you can't always trust your own heart. You can't always trust your own mind to know the mind of God. God says his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. He said his ways are higher than our ways. I mean, and come on, it's not like he's asking us to chop off our hand to get a blessing, which I don't even want to go there because I know Jesus says something like that. But you're sitting around wondering what's going on. Well, look at blind Bartimaeus, okay? He heard. He, could, he couldn't see, but he could hear. He heard about Jesus. He heard he was coming, all right? He heard something that he believed, all right? And because he believed it, he made sure he was physically out there and ready when Jesus came. He was waiting on Jesus. He was waiting on this man that he heard about, okay, that was healing people's eyes. So, all of a sudden, he hears the crowd. Here comes the crowd. Here comes the crowd, right? They're all out there. Jesus has fans, y'all. Y'all think Nikki Six has fans. Uh uh-uh. uh. Jesus had fans. All right. And here comes Jesus. Barnabas starts crying out Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. What did the people around him start doing? Telling him to shut up. Be quiet, Barnabas. And the closer Jesus got, Now, Barnabas couldn't see how close Jesus was. He was gauging the information that he was getting by the way the people were acting. Because the more, the closer Jesus got, the meaner the people got. The more they started telling him to shut up. The more the people started telling him to shut up, the louder he got. The more obnoxious he got. He was not about to let these naysaying spectators take his blessing. Okay? The crazier he started hollering out to Jesus till, until he finally got Jesus' attention. See, the closer Jesus gets, the closer you get to your miracle the worse the devil starts acting up, the more the people around you start losing their minds, okay? And when you started praying in the Spirit, you said, well, I'm going to do this, Sandra, but seems like all kind of crazy stuff happens. Just keep on doing it. Just keep on. That means you're doing the right thing. If you're saved. If you're not saved, don't copy me. Let's go to Acts chapter 19 to the book of Ephesus, okay, where some folk tried, some folks tried to copy Paul, okay? Y'all need a little rundown on Ephesus real quick. How much time I got, Ron? You got uh, 30 more minutes left. Uh, I want to tell you you're listening to Red Letters Radio with Andra Polanis, the founder of Zientology. If you want to give to this ministry, it's easy to do so by going to the Cash App and Z- dollar sign Zientology or PayPal at paypal.me slash Zientology. Here's how you spell Zientology, T-Z-I-O-N-T-O-L-O-G-Y. Now back to more of the Red Letters Radio with Andra Polanis. All right, and Zientology simply means the study of the kingdom of God. And uh, like I said, your donations are making it possible for Zientology to reach the world. Zientology is a movement. Zientology is, is, is a revival. That's what it is. It's a revival. And um, but we were talking about the book of Ephesus, okay? All right. 
in Acts chapter 19, we see two different guys, okay, copying uh, the Apostle Paul. We see a guy named, uh, oh, what, what's his name? He was out there baptizing people in, in John's baptism. Well, I'm going to call him Ricky, okay? But he has a, re- a name. It's in uh, Acts chapter 19. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to get my Bible and open it up. I'll tell you this guy's name. Just chill. Let Ryan talk to you a minute, convince you to make a donation. <laughs> you are tuned in to Red Letters Radio. We have about 30 more minutes to go. We appreciate you tuning in. Red Letters Radio with Andrew Polanis. You can hear it each and every week here at this time. And you can make your donations to Cash App or PayPal at paypal.me slash Zientology or go to Cash App at dollar sign Zientology. I will spell that again, T-Z-I-O-N-T-O-L. O-G-Y. You are listening to Red Letters Radio with Andrew Polanis. It is an hour broadcast full of Zientology and the study of God. Okay. I was going to call the young man Ricky, but his name's Apollos. Okay. Um, but, you know, we, you can call him Ricky, Apollos. But Apollos in Acts chapter 19 was he had heard about Jesus and about John the Baptist. And he was preaching Jesus Christ and baptizing people with water. Okay, like John the Baptist was. And then the Apostle Paul came along <clears throat> and said, uh, What are you doing? Haven't you received the gift of the Holy Spirit? And that's, what, that's how you have the ability to pray in this language. Now, if you haven't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit... Do not go into your prayer closet and and copy somebody that does. Okay, if you got something bad happening to you that and you haven't received the gift of the Holy Spirit, you haven't been born again, and you're not a born again believer in Jesus Christ, then that might have something to do with it. Okay, or if you're mocking a Christian that does do it, and something bad's happening to you, that well, that's just God getting on to you, but. Uh, Cause you don't, you're not supposed to mock God's children, but this guy's name was Apollos. And he said, I didn't even know there was any such a thing as this. And look, you'd be surprised at the Christians out here that could be praying like this. And when you pray in the spirit, you pray the perfect will of God and only God can understand it. And Satan can't hinder it. And, and, and some people are, who have been doing it. Good things have been happening in your life, haven't they? You're like, I, I, sh- I can't. I should have been doing this for the past 20 years. Yeah, yeah. But you know now. You know, and God can redeem time. Oh, yeah, if he can bring somebody back from the dead after four days, he can redeem the 20 years you didn't pray this way. But I'm just saying, look at Apollos, Apollos here. They received this, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It said they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, okay, and received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit came on them, and they spoke in tongues. All that means is in other languages, okay? They spoke in in a heavenly prayer language, all right? But then... Paul went on, he went on to what they called church back then, the synagogue, spoke to them. But God was doing extraordinary miracles through Paul in Acts chapter 19 because Ephesus was the witchcraft capital of the world. Oh, yes, it was. The head sorcerer that had the most power on the whole planet lived in Ephesus. The biggest demon, okay, I know it lives in Sin City today, but back then this devil lived in Ephesus, okay? It moves around. It, it's, it's been moving around over hundreds and hundreds. Now, now it's trying to get up in outer space, but we won't go there right now. But this, this place right here, if Satan had his throne somewhere, it was Ephesus, okay? And God did extraordinary 
miracles through Paul, even the handkerchiefs that touched Paul's body were taken to six people and demons came out of them and they were healed. Okay. Now, Paul didn't walk around strutting like a peacock because he had all the power. As a matter of fact, Paul kind of just, uh, you know, when, when God's doing something like that, word gets out. Okay. And some dudes tried to copy Paul. Some, 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 like I said, these, these, this was the witchcraft capital of the world. Okay. So these half pagan, half Jewish, I don't know what they were, but they, they thought that this was just a good gimmick, make some money. So they were going to try it. Right. They walked up on this demon possessed person. I can just see it now. The devil's sitting there shooting pool. And these dudes walk in there and, and start trying to do what Paul does, trying to copy Paul. And I want you to know that demon turned around and told them, yeah, we know, I know who Paul is. Paul, yeah, but I don't know who you are. And beat the living daylights out of these guys, stripped them naked, and threw them all over in a ditch, left them there bleeding in a ditch to die. Because they were trying to copy Paul. Now, nothing happened to Apollos, right? Apollos was trying to copy Paul. He was trying to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. What was the difference? Like, if we compared and contrasted Apollos with the seven sons of Sceva, which that's what they call them. I would call them, I would call them something different. <laughs> I'm just calling the children of the Satanists, okay? And when that happened, let me tell you what happened. All the witches and warlocks got saved in Ephesus, and that's where we got the church of Ephesus, which is mentioned in the book of Revelation. Ephesus was one of the seven churches. Mm -hmm. Ephesus made it to become part of God's special forces, Revelation. A bunch of witches and warlocks that got saved. You know why? You know why they got saved, Ryan? Why did they get saved, Andrew? I mean, y'all don't be looking at me like Alice in Wonderland out there, okay? Uh, I'm just going to amen myself. I was looking at you in a different way, but Well, <laughs> because they conjured up a demon, okay? The, the, the Apostle Paul was just being a humble servant of God, okay? He he. he he planted that church. Apollos was, I guess, the pastor of the church of Ephesus because he was the leader at the time. He didn't, he didn't nothing bad happen to him, right? He just received the Holy Spirit. I think it was the intention of the heart, right? It was the intention of the heart, the reason why Apollos got away with it and the seven sons of Sceva did Okay, because they were Satanists trying to copy real Christians who really wanted to believe, you know. And look, the demon they conjured up, it was their own demon. The Apostle Paul didn't go to Ephesus and say, I'm the most powerful person here. And the power that I have upon me is greater than any kind of spiritual power that exists on this planet. I am the man because I'm walking with God and I'm God's man. All right. And, and, and every demonic spirit has to bow down to the Holy Spirit of God. He didn't even go in there and say that. The devil stood up and said, Paul, I know. Okay? In other words, their own demon told them that, that apostle over there, there's an apostle over there, and that apostle has got more power than you. Because when, when they saw this, when all the witches and warlocks saw, uh, that demon that they conjured up, their own devil told them, that apostle over there is more powerful than you. They got saved. They repented. They got saved. They burned their Harry Potter books, their Harry Potter movies. They're, they are everything, anything and everything, okay? 
and they repented. Right? Amen. 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 You guys are tuned in to Red Letters Radio with Andrew Polanis. We still have about 10 more minutes left in the broadcast. If you'd like to support this broadcast, you can go to Cash App, Zientology, or you can also go to paypal.me slash Zientology. Make sure you guys give today. Help out with this wonderful ministry. Now back to this broadcast, Red Letters at Radio Hour. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So, what are we learning here about praying in the Spirit? The thoughts, right? The elements of communication exist here, okay? You have to pray. You have to speak it out. You have to... Like I said, you got to get that flesh. You got to get past whatever religious idea you have. But if you're not a Christian and you want to be a Christian, you say, look, I conjured up a demon, Andrew, and I sent it over there to attack you, and that demon came back and told me that you were the boss. Yeah, well, you should have called me first. I could have saved you some time. Oh, yeah. I could have saved you some time. But what we're going to do is get you saved is what we're going to do. Okay? Okay. You kneel down wherever you are right now and you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and you ask him to forgive you for your sins. You ask him to forgive you. And even if you are saved, get saved again. It's not going to hurt you to rededicate. Just, hey. It was so wonderful the first time I did it. I'd be glad to do it again. It's a wonderful experience when you come to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And if you are not a child of God, you can become one. If you kneel down and make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior and mean it with all your heart, You know, I wish I could have something more fancier to say with bigger words, but it really is just that simple. And I promise you, nobody's ever bursted into flames doing it. Repenting for your sins and coming to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Uh, I've never seen anybody do that, and then all of a sudden they just bursted into flames or they fell over dead. Uh, never in my life I've ever have I ever seen God kill somebody for repent. <laughs> Actually, repentance is his soft spot. You want to get out of trouble? Repentance, because from Genesis to Revelation, that's the message: repent. All God's trying to do in the Book of Revelation, you see three categories of people in the Book of Revelation. You see saved people, the church. You see people who are on the line, they half in the church and half in the world, and you see full-blown devil worshipers. If you look at all the people from the beginning of Revelation to the end, they all fit in one of those categories. They're either part of the church, they're either in the world, and they're kind of half in the world, and they're, they're in the valley of decision. You know, I'm not really sure if I want to go with God or not. And then you got full-blown Satanists, people who have already decided they're against God. They don't want you to believe in God, and they're going to destroy anything that looks like God. And they're going to twist God up and make God look like something he's not. They're going to twist up and, and, and put some fake preachers out there that's going to give you such a distorted view of Jesus Christ that, that we're, you're not even going to know 
you'd be like, this isn't working for me. This isn't working for me. It's happening today. But one thing is consistent from the beginning of Revelation to the end, and that's repentance. The one and only thing God ever asked us to do is to repent. We think we're too good to do that. I have to repent every day. Every day I have an argument with my husband, and every day I have to repent for it. Amen. You guys, stay with us. You are listening to the Red Letters radio broadcast. Remember, you can donate to this broadcast just by going to our Cash App at Cash App, dollar sign Zientology, or PayPal at paypal.me slash Zientology. You know how to spell that? Well, it's easy. T-Z-I-O-N-T-O-L-O-G-Y. We have more with Andrew Polanis in the last five minutes of this broadcast. Thank you for tuning in. All right. Now, if the devil tries to bother you this week, you I want you to do this. You look that devil in the eye, and you tell that devil, my preacher said, if you got a problem with me, take it up with her. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. He won't call my phone number. I promise you, he will not dial my number. But anyway, that was just a little joke, but... I'm going to, you know, since the devil's all about hindering our prayers in English, uh, you know, keep praying in the spirit. Keep doing it as much as you can. If you pray, if you want to pray silently, pray silently in the spirit. That, hey, that helps with those negative thoughts, right? But I'm going to leave you with a little prayer. And since the devil likes uh, hindering uh, my prayers when I'm praying in English, I got a real good prayer for him. I'm about to pray in English, and I hope it. I hope he dies when I pray this prayer. I really. Do. I hope Satan. I hope he loses his head and is cast into the lake of fire once I'm done praying this prayer because I am so sick of Satan that I'm about ready to run him through with my sword. But anyway, <clears throat> Christian ninja style. And if Harry Potter don't like it, he can go to hell with him. But anyway. Here we go. I got a little prayer for you. I want all my brothers and sisters, we're going to pray this and then we're taking communion. Okay? We're going to be a bunch of imperfect people who uh, uh, know we're imperfect. We're not coming before God today being perfect Christian people that do everything right. We're coming before God knowing we need to be fixed constantly. Okay? Um... So, here we go. We're going to take communion. Ryan's getting all the, you get your communion things ready. And if you're listening to this on the replay, um, you know, anything, cracker, juice, you know, just anything uh, you can use for communion. Lord Jesus, you have called and equipped your church to follow you and to do your will. We, the church, submit to you in our affliction we ask you to convict us of any sin that allows the arrows of Satan to buffet us. We are willing and ready to repent of anything that gives the enemy a place. We ask you to reveal areas of ignorance or fear that may have given the enemy an opportunity. Lord, search out, expose, and break the power of all schemes of Satan that have been sent against your church and your people, God. We seek your face. We call to you. Hear and answer your people, God, and deliver us from trouble. We ask you to turn all of Satan's evil schemes into good. Turn it around to where it works good and it works out for our favor, God. Satan... In the authority of the name of Jesus Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and in accordance to the word of God, we raise our shield of faith against you and resist you with the word of God and the sword of the Holy Spirit that proclaims your judgment as a false God, an accuser and afflictor of the sons and daughters of the Almighty God.
We announce your works in our lives, in the lives of our families, in the lives of our team members, in the lives of our church members. Destroyed. Your works are destroyed, Satan, through the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. We refuse and break all curses, hexes, vexes, spells, incantations, rituals, psychic powers, works of witchcraft, pagan ideologies, and the practices of the Nicolaitans. We, we denounce them. We resist all demonic power sent to us from any source, witch, warlock, shaman, occult practitioner, religious leader, Whatever you are, whatever you call yourself, okay, we resist you. We send the Holy Spirit to convict you of your sins. We send the Holy Spirit against you to draw you out into the light. Devil, Satan, I hope your people repent and come over to the Lord. It would serve you right. It would serve you right if you went to hell all by yourself. It would serve you right. We call to you to turn away from your sin. We call out to you to turn away from your sin and turn to the mercy of the one true and living God. And I decree it and I declare it this day by the delegated authority given to me by my Lord and Savior and King Jesus Christ that it is done. Amen. Now it's time for us to take our communion here. Now it's time for us to take our communion. So let's go ahead and get that taken care of. Andrew, go ahead. The night that Jesus was betrayed, he broke bread with his disciples. He gave it to each of them, and he said, This is my body that was broken for you. Take and eat. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took his cup and he lifted his cup. And he said, this is the cup of the New Testament, which is written in my blood that was shed for the remission of sins. Take this and drink. Do this in remembrance of me. If you'd like to give to this ministry, go to Cash App at Zientology, dollar sign Zientology, or PayPal at paypal.me slash Zientology. Your donations are going to help keep this ministry going. I want to leave you with this. Go back and read Acts chapter 19. Look at Apollos and look at the seven sons of Sceva. Now, if you have a problem with a woman preaching, you need to look at that story right there. Because it's not the person, it's not per se the preaching it's that person's intention of the heart. If God called a woman to preach, she has to obey him. Okay? And and if if you attack a woman just because she's a female and somebody told you somewhere that a woman's not supposed to tell a man what to do, and if you believe a woman's not supposed to tell a man what to do, then you'll probably never get married. But on on <laughs> But I'm just trying to say that, you know, you've got to look at that. The seven sons of Sceva were trying to do the same thing Apollos. They were both trying to do the same thing. Okay, something real bad happened to them, uh, uh, Sceva boys, okay? And Apollos went on to be the pastor of the Church of Ephesus. And, and that's where we got the Church of Ephesus. And... Uh, they didn't really, Ephesus, the city clerk didn't really like all that. So it was the city clerk that kind of called a big meeting against the apostle um, because uh, they wanted to try to find some legal way to get rid of them. But that's just a rundown of Acts chapter 19. But go back and read it for yourself, and, you know, you might get something more from it. 
This has been the Red Letters Radio Broadcast Hour with Andrew Polanis, founder of Zientology. Killing Satan, one red letter at a time. Tune in next time for another edition of the Red Letter Red Letters Radio Broadcast. control what's outside your home, but you can control what comes in. Because Clorox disinfecting wipes kill 99.9% of viruses and bacteria, including COVID-19 virus, when used as directed on hard, non-porous surfaces. So whether it's from dirty doorknobs, dirty shoes, or something else, outside germs won't stand the chance. When it counts, trust Clorox. Kill Pseudomonas, Salmonella, and Influenza virus type A2. Kill SARS-CoV-2 on hard, non-porous surfaces. Use as directed. You can't control what's outside your home, but you can control what comes in. Because Clorox disinfecting wipes kill 99.9% of viruses and bacteria, including COVID-19 virus, when used as directed on hard, non-porous surfaces. So whether it's from dirty doorknobs, dirty shoes, or something else, outside germs won't stand the chance. When it counts, trust Clorox. Kill Pseudomonas, Salmonella, and Influenza virus type A2. Kill SARS-CoV-2 on hard, non-porous surfaces. Use as directed.